Are Freedom Off-Road's third gen 4Runner upper control arms a good budget value? Well, stick around and we'll find out. If you're new here, my name is Matt Kester and this is our channel, Secondhand Overland. We're dedicated to showing you that you don't need excessive budgets to have a great time off-roading, overlanding, or just exploring the world. For those of you who have been here for a minute, you might notice that we've rebranded a bit. I'll always be Frugal Explorer Dad on Instagram, but I feel like this name change is more in line with what our community here has become, a bunch of like-minded automotive masochists who prefer keeping quality older rigs on the road rather than mortgaging the farm to buy new ones. I put the question to you guys the other day and you responded overwhelmingly in favor of the change. I thank you for taking the time to weigh in and appreciate you helping me with the decision. You guys really are awesome. Okay, enough housekeeping. Time to talk about Freedom Off-Road's upper control arms. The ones we put on, model number FO-T705FU, are designed for two to four inch lifts, feature a greasable ball joint, and currently retail for around $360 on Amazon. Freedom does offer a uniball style set, FO-T705FU-UB, which MSRPs for about $530, although I have seen them recently on Amazon lower than $480. I've put links in the description below to both these control arms as well as a search link to all of Freedom Off-Road's products currently available on Amazon. They do make a wide ranging variety of off-road suspension parts for more than just third gen 4Runners. They've got a whole host of control arms, shocks, spacers, springs, you name it. So it's worth looking into for your next budget build. Heck, they've even got plenty of stuff for the WJ. Just don't tell Renee. Just to clarify, we are not currently affiliated with Freedom Off-Road, but we are an Amazon affiliate. So any purchases you make through these links may provide a small commission to the channel, which we are able to reinvest into creating more content for you guys. Okay, so you might be asking, why do I need new upper control arms? Well, the short of it is that when you lift a vehicle, it takes the suspension geometry outside the parameters the manufacturer designed for it, when you use spacers or longer shocks, it's going to change the orientation of the spindle to the ground, resulting in a drastic change in tire camber and caster. At a certain point, this change will not be correctable through the normal alignment process. That's where an aftermarket set of upper control arms comes in. They have geometry designed to allow proper alignment to be restored to the vehicle. Because of their tube and welded construction, they are generally stronger and lighter than the stamped upper control arms most manufacturers use to cut costs and should eliminate any issues with the upper control arm striking struts and coils at full droop. They're also designed with a longer travel arc in mind, so it means their ball joints will move through a greater range of motion. While you can get an even greater range of motion out of the uniball type of upper control arms, we didn't go with them because we didn't feel that the extra cost was worth it for our particular application. Due to their exposed nature, uniballs just wear out quicker, are more prone to corrosion from road salt, and if you aren't hyper vigilant with applying spray lubricant to them, they will drive you nuts with their metal on metal grinding. Honestly, we're never going to need them on any of our rigs, we're just not that extreme. Ooh. But if you're looking to get more serious into a long travel suspension or do more rock crawling, they might just be worth looking at. 
Just be aware before you fork over the cash for something with a potential maintenance liability that you don't really need. Honestly, with the Bilstein shocks and old man emu springs that we have on our 4Runner, we didn't technically need to upgrade the upper control arms. But they became a justifiable upgrade when it came time to replace our upper ball joints and upper control arm bushings. Quality upper ball joints are going to run you anywhere from $80 to $120 per pair, and upper control arm bushings can be anywhere from $40 to $100 per pair. And then there's the labor. Go watch Timmy the Toolman's videos on changing upper ball joints and upper control arm bushings and see what all goes into it. For literally a few dollars more, you can make this a nearly bolt up process as the Freedom upper control arms come with new rubber bushings in them and a greasable ball joint already pressed in. I said nearly before because you're going to have to press the old upper ball joint out of the spindle. Something you're going to have to acquire more tools for because you own a Toyota. You will need a special sleeve adapter set to get the upper ball joint out correctly using a C-press. We've left a link in the description below. Just go ahead and bite the bullet if you're going to DIY this install and buy the OTC set we've listed below. I tried doing this with the Honda slash Toyota adapter set that they rent at my local O'Reilly's and I ended up losing most of a week waiting for the tools I should have ordered in the first place. An installation is where, honestly, Freedom should step up their game. You're not going to find any instructions in the box. I was able to figure it out using other people's upper control arm and upper ball joint videos. Thanks again, Timmy! We'll have an installation tutorial video out soon, and when it does go live, I'll put a link in the description below, or maybe put one of those little card things somewhere like here, or 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 here. I don't know where the hell the damn thing goes. How do they perform? Well, so far so good. I will throw a bit of disclaimer that at the same time we installed the Freedom Upper Control Arms, we did replace the lower control arm bushings and shortly thereafter put a set of 265-75R16 Falcon Wild Peaks on, so there are going to be some other factors at play here. First, because we fully replaced all our control arm bushings and the upper ball joints, we've lost all the front end vibration our Forerunner was suffering from. Second, when we did replace the tires, it was very apparent that the inside shoulders of the Cooper ATs we took off were wearing more, a sign of alignment issues that may have been caused by the combination of factory control arms and lift. We had the Forerunner realigned as soon as we made all these changes, and it appears we may have gotten the camper right. Another improvement is the caster angle, which means there's more of it, and that's a good thing. At highway speeds, it makes it easier for the vehicle to track in a straight line and not wander all over the place, which is something we like since we've let our Forerunner run around for the last year au natural with no front sway bar. Finally, after putting the Freedom Off-Road control arms through their paces on the trails of Sedona, it definitely appears the arms do not strike the front coils at droop, which is something the OEM control arms would do. Drawbacks! Well, as I said before, Freedom doesn't currently supply the best of instructions with these arms. Actually, they don't supply any instructions, which can be more than a little frustrating. Also, I've seen some questions raised on the forums in regards to build quality, as these arms do appear to be manufactured somewhere overseas. Now, Freedom's website does emphasize that they have a lifetime structural warranty. As for the bushings and ball joints, well, they fall under their one-year wear and tear warranty. Will they hold up? Well, we're about to find out. We are going to keep these arms on this Forerunner for at least the next year, and we'll keep you posted. We did purchase these control arms through Amazon at full retail with our own money, so you best believe I want to make sure we get what we paid for. And should anything happen, it'll make great content if we have to file a warranty claim. I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you think we made a smart purchase here trying to avoid either backbreaking labor or a more expensive set of upper control arms? Do you think they're going to last? Let us know in the comments section. And if you're new here, why don't you go ahead and subscribe and ring that little bell so you get notified every time we put out a new video. As always, I'm Matt Kester, and this is Secondhand Overland. Thanks for watching. Be good.